Hey friends, have you been struggling to maintain your motivation around the things that you either want to be doing, maybe the things you want to accomplish, and even more importantly, of, around being the person that you want to be 100% of the time? Well, if you've been struggling with this or found your motivation to be kind of hit and miss, then this episode is for you. So this is part two in a two-part series that talks about two types of imposter syndrome that are sabotaging your motivation. You see, the goal is to create an ability to have sustainable motivation so that you can create it at any given time. But oftentimes we're not aware of what's stopping our motivation. We get down on ourselves, we do negative self-talk, we ask ourselves why, we feel like failures, on and on and on and on. And if you can identify with that, raise your hand with me because that is what I've done before. So what we did in part one was identify two different types of imposter syndrome that is really sabotaging your motivation. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about specific processes and questions you can be asking yourself so that you can identify the imposter syndrome, decide what you want to do about it, and then move through it and regain your motivation. Now, that sounds easier said than done, but after today, if you stick around to the end, you will find out the specific questions to ask yourself. I'm going to walk you through the process on each different types of imposter syndrome because they are not the same. I want to say welcome to another episode of Road to Radical Visibility. I am your host, Rachel Freeman Sowers, also known as the Breakthrough Bitch, because I am passionate about helping people in the LGBT plus community and female communities become more bold in the expression of themselves, their mission and their truth in life and in business. And if you've hung out here with me for very long, you'll know that my personal and my professional motto is being 100% yourself 100% of the time, no shame or guilt needed. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. I want to go ahead and start diving in. The first thing I want to tell you is, is that these two types of imposter syndrome cannot be dealt with in the same way because they don't come from the same root issue. So the first imposter syndrome is I am not enough upon imposter syndrome. So you can go back to last week's episode and check out these definitions, but I'm going to just briefly say I'm not enough imposter syndrome has to do with not feeling like you have the right skills, the tools, the gifts, the abilities, whatever. I'm not enough to be able to do something or be here or participate in something, right? So that's the first kind of imposter syndrome. The second type of imposter syndrome is I am not aligned. So this type of imposter syndrome does not have anything to do with not feeling like you're not enough or this type of imposter syndrome, you know, you have the skills, you know, you have the capacity, you know, have, you have the gifts to do it. You have the capability to do it, but it just doesn't feel right. There's something out of alignment, which causes more chaos internally. This often comes when we're like trying to keep fitting in. So throughout all of my years um, in, the ther in my therapy um, career, and even now as I get to help people in the 100% you kind of category of my business, um, what comes up is in a, we try to fit ourselves into other jobs and things like that, but we keep on coming out to the same result. We don't feel fulfilled. We don't feel like we're living to our fullest purpose. We don't feel like we're living to our potential. We know that there's more for us, right? Those are the kinds of feelings that come along with I am not aligned imposter syndrome. All right, so those are the two defined. Now let's start getting into what do you do once you've identified what kind of imposter syndrome you are experiencing is popping up for you, what do we do next? So I want to clearly define the goals, the goals, the goal of the I am not enough imposter syndrome isn't automatically to feel ultimately worthy, but is to develop an inner knowing that creates the confidence, right? 
it creates this knowing that you are worthy, like you can either obtain what you need to obtain or you already have it. So the point is, is that we don't continue to demean ourselves and try and make ourselves feel or um, I don't know how to explain it, like that we need more. It's kind of like someone that goes back to school again and again and again and again, or keeps getting certificates, but never uses what they have, right? Those are feelings of for whatever reason, I'm not enough, right? Um, so we need to identify the goal, the goal of the I am not enough imposter syndrome. The opposite of that is that we want to know that we are enough no matter what, okay? So here are five questions and then one thing to do to work through the I am not enough imposter syndrome. Now you may be saying, Rachel, what you're going to say is going to sound easier said than done. You've been doing it for a while. The answer is sometimes, yes, it is easier said than done. Second, I have been doing it for a while. I practice what I preach. I know that this process works and I lead my clients through it all of the time. So when they go through these processes for themselves and take this deeper knowing and deeper dive into themselves, it becomes um, the I'm not enough imposter syndrome literally is a glitch that they turn around and re, re, they can move through quite quickly. So the first question is, what is a specific thought in my head? So a lot of times we are very cognitive thinkers and kind of cut ourselves off at the neck here and don't recognize what the body is doing. So the first thing I want you to do is do one of the easiest things is what is the thought? So you're like, okay, great. I know what the thought, or you may have lots of thoughts about why you're not enough. And I want you to choose one. And as you go through this process, if another thought comes up, do the process again. If another thought comes up, do the process again. This is worth it, friend. I'm telling you, there, there doesn't need to be a hack or a shortcut. Once you get the process down, it literally becomes 30 seconds of, I feel like an imposter. I, I know I'm enough. This is why I'm enough. Therefore, I'm going to take the action that I want to take. I'm going to follow through for myself on that commitment. So what is the th specific thought that you have in your head? Identify that. Now, if it comes up for you right now, seriously get a pen and paper and write it down. I'll walk you through this process. The number two question is, what is the belief around this thought? So for me, um, let's just take the AIDS life cycle ride. Although I feel like I can, can do it, there's still some have I trained enough, right? So it's interesting how this pops up for me when I've been training really hard, but it's still there. So the process, the thought is, am I going to be able to make it 545 miles over seven days? I don't think I'm going to be able to. Sometimes I hear that this is being truly raw and real. What is the belief around this thought? The belief is, is that if I don't train hard enough, if I'm not on the bike every day, if all of these, if I don't get in good, <laughs> excuse me, good enough shape, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to look like a failure. People are going to say she tried and she couldn't. People are going to say, see, she just, you know, she thought she was better than she was, right? Um, all of these different thoughts come in. So what is the belief around that? The belief is, is that if I don't train really hard, I'm not going to be able to make it. Because all of these other people, you know, watch documentaries that have trained so hard, right? So write down what is the belief around your thought. Number three is what makes this true for me? So this is really interesting. The belief that I have honestly does come from watching my dad ride in the ride for three, three times, um, watching his training, hearing his thoughts, his feelings, his experiences, right? Oftentimes we gain some of this truth from what's externally around us but it is not necessarily my truth, right? So we kind of adopt these things. So what makes this true for me? Ask yourself the question, what makes this belief true for me? Then you're going to ask, is it mine or was it given to me? This is where the freedom starts to seep in, 
right? What's true, it was given to me. This is what I've adopted by watching documentaries, by watching endurance athletes, all of these things. You have to have this body type. You have to eat this way. You have to do these things and then you'll be successful. That's not my truth. My truth is, is that I'm going to go on this ride. I'm going to ride as many miles as I can every single day. And I'm going to enjoy this journey. Right? That is my truth. My truth is I can get on a bike and I know that I can ride. Well, I've ridden 81 miles in a day. You know, I know that I can ride. But really, what is my truth is that that is my truth. I can ride. And then what do I want instead? So instead of having this initial thought, instead of having this belief, what do I want instead? And remember, we're not going back to why. We've already identified the why in questions one and two. This is why. So we don't want to go back there. We want the what instead. And what do I want instead? I want to believe that I'm going to get on a bike and I'm going to ride as much as I can in a way that fits me and is in alignment with me every single day. That's what I'm going to do. This is what I want instead. I want to believe that I can get on my bike and that I can feel powerful and that I can feel strong and that I can feel connected and that I can feel all of the things that I feel when I'm on a training ride, right? I'm going to bring that all in into what I want instead. And then you're going to do the one thing I continue to tell everyone to do in my work. And the one thing that my clients and I do the most together is we are going to visualize. We're going to create the direction for the reticular activation system in the base of the brain to go to. We're going to tell our brains what is real for us. What is real for me is I'm going to get on a bike. I'm going to be surrounded by thousands of people that are there to support me, that are there to encourage one another, that are there to ride for the same cause. I'm going to visualize how my body is going to feel. I'm going to feel that feeling in my body. I'm going to notice where that's at. I'm going to see myself riding. I'm going to feel myself and my legs and my quads burning and continuing to ride. Anyway, I'm going to know that I can handle and see how I'm going to handle every single thing that may come in my way. This is about returning to your knowing. This is how you develop the knowing. So then when the I am not enough imposter syndrome comes up, it's no longer that I am not enough. Like I know I am enough. Therefore, I do the thing that I want to do. And I can move pretty quickly through this process if you practice. So the questions are, what is the specific thought in my head? What is the belief around the thought? What makes it true for me? Is it mine or was it given to me? And what do I want to, what do I want instead? Define that, visualize it, feel it in the body, put yourself in that space, feeling, knowing, feeling confident, feeling all of that ability within you, right? It's kind of like a fire that's get lit, that gets lit. Or oftentimes there, I feel like it's like um, champagne that keeps this bubbly. Like it just starts going like this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm cracking myself up looking at my own face. Um, if you're watching this video, let me know if you're cracking up too. <laughs> if you're watching the podcast or listening to the podcast, you're going to have to go watch the video. Okay, so that's what you do with I am not enough imposter syndrome. That's how you move through it. Once you get those good feelings going in your body, once you're visualizing that, you're telling the brain what is real because we tell our brains what's real. You tell the brain what's real. That is what you will automatically begin to focus on. Now, let me tell you, you will have to do this process several times in a row. I do this process several times in a row. The beauty of it is, is that the more you do it, the more you practice, the less time it takes within 30 seconds, within 10 seconds, within 15 seconds. I'm back to where I need to be. That's what's going to keep me going on the bike. That's what's going to keep me going for 545, 545 miles, right? It's this re, re, um, 
creating of my reality every single second of the day. And then it just becomes habitual and I don't even really have to think about it much. It's very rare that I don't um, speak up in what I wanna say or um, have connection with my clients in which I'm speaking some truth and they're able to hear that because there's that kind of connection, right? You just move through it. All right, so that's the first one. The second type of imposter syndrome is I am not aligned. Now remember this imposter syndrome, the goal for this is to authentically be living your life. And I know the word authentic is really kind of cliche these days, but ever since I started this, <laughs> excuse me, started this business, this is really what I've been striving to do my whole entire life is find my truest self, find my whole self and operate from that part of me right? And so whenever I wasn't or haven't been able to operate from that part of me, what happens is I become unaligned. And when we live unaligned for so long, we think that unaligned or being unaligned is this. And this alignment is uncomfortable. So what we need to do is bring them back and noticing. So the ultimate goal of this is full alignment, being fully yourself, and knowing exactly what you need in order to come back into alignment. Also, it's about the courage to take the step that that means sometimes. It's about the courage for people to say to me, um, you have, you've had career ADHD. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I have. Because like I try one thing and it didn't fit for very long. And it's interesting, the closer I got to knowing what exactly my alignment was, the less time I spent in jobs. Now, some people may think that that's a bad thing. For me, I think it was a good thing. It got me closer to entrepreneurship. And this is what I get to do now. And this fits me. This is in alignment with me. So here are the five questions in the process you're going to walk yourself through. Where is this coming from? Oftentimes, there's an external stimulant that ultimately causes an internal feeling of not being aligned. So is there an environment that happened? Was there a meeting you went to? Did someone say something to you? And it was like, oh, or you're like, hmm? uh, I don't get that, right? It's, it's not making sense. There's confusion. It, it creates a little bit of chaos. What we want to do is like, where is this coming from? And then from the external, we want to go internal. Now, this can be one of the hardest concepts because what happens is we separate our mind and our body for so long, we forget what it feels like to connect to the body. So we identify externally where this is coming from. Then we go internal and we connect with the knowing part of you. Now, if you're like, Rachel, I don't know what that means. That's okay. DM me. We can talk about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to connect with the heart. And this makes the connection then external. This was the trigger. This is the thing that's triggered inside of me. And what do I need to do? How do I connect? So you drop down into the body and to this knowing part of you. And for me, I just connect to my heart or like right here in my chest, like this deeper knowing, the wise one within me. I say that a lot, right? The light, wise one within you. I drop in and I connect with her. And then I say, what is my truth? This can sometimes be difficult to hear because in all the times I've tried to fit in, my truth is, is that it wasn't the place for me. But all of the social constructs, all of the things I've been told to do said I should be doing that if I want this thing, if I want to be successful, if I want to retire and have money, you have to stay in this job and you have to essentially suffer. Parts of you need to be consist consistently cut off, taught to be small, don't reveal that, don't say that, don't show that part of you. When everything inside of me just wanted to break out. And so often when I connected with the deeper part of me, my truth was this wasn't a good fit. 
Maybe this happens in career for you. Maybe this has happened in relationships for you. Maybe this has happened in your business where you've pivoted. Like there's, I, I'm constantly like transforming my business. And I love that. Like it fits me well. That's what I want, right? What is my truth? Number four, embody the truth and claim it. My truth is that this is no longer a fit. It is no longer a match for the way that I want to be experiencing and interacting in my life and in the world. It's no longer a fit for me to keep my mouth shut about how much I love helping people be 100% themselves 100% of the time, no shame or guilt needed. My truth is I no longer have to just act like I'm going to go along with the status quo because I don't want to go along with the status quo. I want to debunk all of these beliefs that are honestly bullshit that were given to me and to other people, right? This is my truth. Then I'm going to claim it. This is my truth. If you know what your truth is right now and you said a sentence that my truth is and then say it, and then just don't say anything else. My truth is that this is my path. My truth is that I did a video um, on Wednesday morning. Like my truth is I don't ever need to have a thigh gap. My truth is, is that I love my strong legs, my strong heart, and my strong lungs. This the truth, my truth is, is that I want to live my life differently. It's not, I deserve to live it. It's not, I've earned to live it. It's that I want to live it differently, right? Let me know if this is making sense for you. And then the, the fifth question is, what is the next right step for me? Okay, here we go again. Nice, deep breath. What we're talking about is not what is the next step that I can take for myself that will help other people feel better about themselves? No. You may say that feels really selfish, Rachel. Well, I'm going to say that it isn't selfish. What is the next step I can take for me that will allow me to be the fullest version of myself and make the impact I want to make. Sometimes the step is scary. And that's really what one of the things I help my clients with the most is that these are things that are not typically done. And so this is a new territory for them. And having that support around them is what creates a lot of the success that they experience. And then you're going to do the very last step that you did in the first one. This is where it's only the same is that you're going to visualize it. You're going to show your reticular activation system, what your truth is. Now, part of this is, I think there's like a slice of hope in here, right? But sometimes it doesn't feel like, well, if I do this, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. What am I going to do? Blah, blah, blah. Right. But the more you get to know yourself, the more you get to trust yourself and work yourself through this process of imposter syndrome, whichever type that you're working through, the, the more confident, the more knowing you become, <coughs> excuse me. And then it literally is snapshots. So I have a client yesterday. He said, I sat for 10 minutes getting up the courage to say this one thing or to ask this one question of this other person. What we're helping him do now is we're helping him move through this process more quickly. So next time it takes seven minutes, next time it takes five minutes, next time it takes two minutes, right? The more you do it, visualize it, tell your brain what is real, feel it in your body. Notice the parts of your body that feel this courage. You know, the, the lungs have a lot to do with courage and really decreasing this, this amount of fear, 
right? So notice how the chest feels. Notice if you feel, you know, this courage in your hands, in your heart, in your eyes, in your face, you know, just notice all of these things, really get all of that goodness within your body and then visualize yourself actually doing the thing that you need to do. So if that's quit your job, visualize how you want to be interacting in the moments that you quit your job. If this means pivoting in your business, notice what that means when you are pivoting the business, who's around you, what are you experiencing? How are you feeling? What um, are the smells? What do you see? What are the colors around you? Like all of it, just get all of that goodness in every single cell of your body. And then it will become easier because in this moment of visualization, in both of these types, what you're actually doing is changing the response of the nervous system. We need to do this because our nervous system is heightened. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And that I am not aligned. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I feel this way. How come I just can't do it? All these other people are okay with it, right? We're in a heightened state and we need to tell the nervous system, shh, it's okay. We're still safe, right? These are all different types of things that's incorporated in these processes. Now, if you try this process and you get stumped on any one of these questions, I'd love to have you reach out to me. Let me know, don't stay stuck. I'm going to talk more about this kind of thing in the next um, quite a few, um, the next road to radical visibility. So I want to remind you, if you like this episode, make sure to push the thumbs up button because that always helps and subscribe to the channel so that you can get when the other um, episodes drop down. Okay. So those are the things that you can do to move through, identify, move through imposter syndrome and regain your motivation. The more you do these things, the more you'll create sustainable motivation, the more you'll be able to shift in that, in those moments right away. Now, in some circumstances, it may seem easier than in other circumstances. And that's great because what I'm telling you is that if you can do it in one way, then you can do it in a different way. So take these two ways, make sure that you share it with people who may need to know this. And as you move through this quickly, I'd love to hear about your successes. So please either DM me or put your successes in the comments below because I would love to hear them. All right. So that is today's episode. I hope that it's been inspiring and empowering to you. And I'll end this video like I end every single video. Please make sure to stay true to yourself, be kind to others, and always, always, always honor the wise one that is within you. I'll see you all on the next episode of Road to Radical Visibility. Until then, bye.